Hey, what's up, folks? How's it going? This is Watch. Hope you guys are all doing well. Now, we have the new 2018 MacBook Air over here. It has that brand new Retina display. It's ultra portable, ultra light. But uh, compared to this thing over here, which is the new 12.9 inch iPad Pro, you start to consider some of the technical differences between the two and things become really quite interesting. In terms of actual screen size, uh, you'll see that they're actually quite similar, but there is a difference in terms of resolution. Funny enough, this thing has actually a higher resolution. Specifically, the MacBook Air has a 2560 by 1440 display with a pixel per inch count of about 227. On the iPad Pro, we have a 2732 by 2048 liquid retina display that has a, a very impressive pixel count of about 264. So in terms of actual density, uh, this is actually superior. Furthermore, in terms of brightness and contrast, this actually has a slightly brighter display and the contrast and saturation of the colors pop a little bit more. This is probably one of the best displays Apple has put into any consumer electronic device. Beyond that, you'll notice that we have the keyboard attachment onto the Pro. This is the new Smart Folio keyboard. And in a lot of ways, compared to the ultra low profile keyboard that we have on the Air, I actually prefer this after using it for a couple of days. Firstly, I like the key spacing better. There's a little bit more key travel that gives me a little bit more tactile feedback with the keys themselves versus this feels a little bit more cumbersome and I was never ever comfortable with the current generation and the new crop of uh, low profile keyboards with the butterfly switches integrated in all the MacBook PCs currently available. Now certainly one of the biggest uh, glaring differences between the two is actually this thing is a lot more powerful uh, than this notebook PC. Since it has uh, the Apple A12X chip, uh, you're looking at a completely different new architecture that's probably the fastest that anybody has put into an iOS based device. Now unfortunately the MacBook Air only comes with one CPU option, which is an Intel Core i5-8210Y dual core chip with uh, four threads. It can turbo up to 3.6 gigahertz. We also have four megabytes of uh, cache and uh, 617 integrated Intel graphics. Now uh, this uh, processor is very power efficient. One of the reasons why the battery performance on this is uh, still up to par with the legendary original MacBook Air. But when we start comparing it to the A12X architecture, which has eight physical cores comprised of four performance vertex cores and four Tempest high efficiency cores, we also have a integrated GPU with seven independent cores as well as eight megabytes of cache and the total transistor count for this chip is about 10 billion. Now we have 3.65 gigabytes of RAM available on the iPad versus this comes stock with eight gigabytes and you can upgrade to 16. And in terms of internal storage capacity, uh, we have 64 all the way up to one terabytes on the iPad Pro versus you're looking at about 128 gigabytes uh, all the way up to 1.5 terabytes. Now, if you take a look at the performance differences between the two in terms of our Geekbench results, you can see that although the single core performance isn't too far off uh, from the MacBook Air, but when it comes to the multi-threaded performance, the iPad Pro is in a league of its own, uh, getting over 18,000 points and about 5,000 points in terms of the single core performance. And on the Air, we're getting about 4,194 on the single core score and about 7,665 on the multi-core score. Furthermore, on the uh, Compute Metal GPU benchmark in Geekbench, we're getting uh, well over double the performance on uh, the uh, integrated GPU on the A12X over here compared to the 617 graphics which is a very very subpar and if we continue forward and take a look at the results of the GFX metal GPU benchmarks you can see that the uh, level of performance you're getting with the MacBook Air is absolutely appalling pretty much in the single digits for uh, some of these tests we're getting literally like 25 times the performance on the A12X which some might consider this to be kind of a ripoff because the uh, starting price of this is around a $1,200, whereas you're looking at about $1,000 for this exact 12.9 inch version of the iPad Pro. And if you wanna get the 11 inch model, it retails for $799. So definitely not a bad deal, but with all that performance stuff and everything we've talked about, at the end of the day, I would still, believe it or not, uh, consider getting this because of the fact it's running a real operating system.
system. Mac OS X has a lot more potential and certainly a lot of the applications I use on a day-to-day -day basis uh, are heavily reliant on uh, a full-blown operating system, whether that be Windows or Mac OS X. Obviously, we have a trackpad and uh, even though iOS has come a long way, there's still a lot of great multitasking capabilities uh, with the iPad Pro, but at the end of the day, uh, there's still more limitations than there are capabilities uh, due to the fact that it's still based on a touchscreen platform that's designed essentially for a smartphone. Now certainly if we had a version of the iPad Pro that would run Mac OS X, that would be a, definitely a completely different story, but Mac OS X isn't optimized for touch at this point. Eventually I'm sure there'll be a time where iOS and Mac OS X unite and become one giant operating system, but we're still a couple of years away from that. Uh, the real thing that's really missing from the air to make it a killer uh, PC and something really worth upgrading to is an upgrade of uh, this really slow uh, internal processor. I think the RAM is perfectly reasonable. You don't really need any more than 16 gigabytes and we have plenty of internal storage drive and it's really, really fast SSD, PCI Express based stuff. Uh, but the processor is really, really lacking. And I think it's uh, due to the fact that one, Apple wants to turn a decent profit on this machine. And two, they probably want you to upgrade to the MacBook Pro if you want a faster PC. But that being said, this is barely faster, if not even the same performance as an old 2017, 2016, MacBook Air, which is a really quite upsetting considering the price tag and considering what we have on this mobile side. Now, this is still uh, a fancy glorified uh, tablet, a very powerful tablet nonetheless, and certainly for some people could be a very capable and versatile device. But for me personally, I would probably stick to this, even though this is like five times faster. But really on that guys, uh, that's really, it. hopefully this gave you some sort of understanding and difference between what we stand on the iOS platform and what we have on the uh, MacBook side of things. Uh, certainly the Air is uh, definitely Definitely an interesting PC to say nonetheless. We're gonna have a full review of this thing uh, coming up very, very soon or check out the description if that's not out already. And we have a couple of comparisons with this bad boy as well. If you have any specific questions, let me know. I wanna thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you real soon, take care.